of two. Um, these are the boxing corner templates, and I thought since it's a new product and it's not necessarily self-explanatory, I wanted to show you how to use both of these templates on the show. So by boxing corners, I mean um, corners like this, which are squared off. So this is my Annex double zip box pouch, and um, this project is made basically with just a front and a back fabric, and everything comes together three-dimensionally through the use of those boxing corners. So this project is made using one technique for boxing corners, and I pulled out another one. You may have already made my airplane bag, but again, this is a project that comes together with just the front and the back fabrics, and um, through the use of, again, of those boxing corners, you get the three-dimensional bag. So I used two, diff two different techniques in both of these projects. And the reason that I use these different techniques is because in my patterns, oftentimes I like to show you how to do the same thing in multiple different ways um, to give you that technique in your bag making toolbox so that you can go forward and make projects using those techniques. Um, and especially if you know how to do them several ways, you can pick your favorite way and use that going forward. So there's not necessarily one of these boxing techniques techniques that I like better than the other. They're just two different ways to get at the same um, outcome. And so I wanted to show you how to use um, these templates to get at the same outcome through the boxing corner. So let me show you in the side camera close up of what the templates look like. So here's the, the square template and this is the second one. This is the triangle. All right, so as you'll notice for the square boxing corner template, um, the inches are represented right here. So here's one inch, two inch, and so on. And there's also tick marks for your quarter inches, half inches, three quarters of an inch. So if you're not working off an exact, say, two inch measurement, you still can use this template to box your corners. So the triangle boxing corner template is a little bit different. So we'll be measuring up from this long straight edge. So here's our one inch, two inch, three inch, and so on. And again, there's tick marks for quarter inch, half inch, three quarters of an inch, and you'll be measuring up from here, and you can easily fit your fabric in these um, cutouts for the triangles over here. So let me show you the first technique using this square boxing corner template. So I went ahead and prepared um, sort of some step outs before the show. So this is to represent what you would do with your fabric when um, preparing to box the corner. So I've gone ahead and taken two pieces of fabric and sewn them right sides together using a half inch seam allowance. And I've only sewn the sides and the bottom, which is um, to replicate what you would do when you would be boxing corners in a bag. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my template and I've just arbitrarily decided to go with the two inches. So I'm gonna line that two inch marking in the corner of my project. And you can use certainly use a rotary cutter here. I'm gonna use my fabric marker and scissors. And I'm just gonna draw that two inch square in the corner of my fabric as you see here. Okay, I'm gonna flip the template over and I'm gonna do the same thing in the opposing corner. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut both of these tiny squares out of my fabric. So as you'll notice, as I cut through the corner, I'm cutting my stitching over here and we'll talk about that in just a second, but we'll, we'll need to reinforce that corner so the stitches don't come open when we try to pinch the corners and sew those boxing corners in place. Okay, so this is what your fabric will look like. You'll have those two squares cut out from the bottom. Okay, so here's my next step out. And as you can see, this is the corner where the square has been cut out. And I went ahead and just backstitched a few times back and forth to reinforce that edge here and over here, just so when I pinch my corners, the fabric doesn't start to come apart. So um, let me show you now how we're gonna pinch these corners. So you're just gonna line up the, the cut edges. First off, we're gonna start with having the seam over here, right on top of the seam, and I'm just gonna use my fingers to press that seam open with my hands. And you wanna make sure the seams are right on top of each other as they are right here. I'm gonna go ahead and put a wonder clip on the seam and you wanna make sure that the rest of the fabric is right sides together, and you want it to be a straight edge. You don't want the fabric to be bowed down like this or out like that, because then when the project is finished, you'll get sort of a curved edge. 
Okay, so the next step here after we pin this edge is you're gonna sew, and I'm using a half inch seam allowance for this sample, so you're gonna go ahead and sew this edge using a half inch seam allowance, and I actually went ahead and did that on the opposing corner already just so that you could see what it looks like. So here's my corner that I pinched in, and as you can see, I sewed that half inch seam allowance. So you'll do the stitching on this side as well as, as the opposing side. And let me flip it right side out and show you what that corner looks like. So as you recall, I was using the two inch marking on my boxing corner template. And generally, if you're using that half inch seam allowance, you're just gonna double that measurement for the finished um, width of your side panel when your, let's call this a gusset, is sewn in place. So I'm gonna take my ruler and show you that is is indeed four inches wide. So easy tip, just take that measurement on the boxing corner. I went with two inches, double it, and that'll give you the finished um, width of the side. So this is, um, visualize that's the side of your bag. And to make everything look a little bit more crisp, I find it helpful to use the precision turning tool to poke out your corners, just so you get nice crisp corners before you poke them out. It's not as, urgent here because I don't have any interfacing attached to my fabric, but once you get interfacing, it makes everything bulkier and even more important to get a nice pressed edge right there. So the nice thing about this tool, instead of a pointy tip, it's got this metal round ball and this tool is made from a single piece of metal. And so this round ball gently um, pokes the corners out so that you get a nice crisp corner. Okay. So that was the first boxing corner done with that, um, uh, square template. Now I'm going to show you how to use the second in the set of two and this is for the triangle template. So again I've got my fabric sample prepped and I've gone ahead and sewn using half inch seam allowance the side and the bottom edges. The next step and obviously this is a little bit different from um, that square box and corner template you're going to pinch the edges so that the side seam is right on top of the seam on the bottom. So I'm just going ahead and pinching those fabrics and you can either feel the seams with your fingers to make sure they're on top of each other or what I like to do is I like to stick a pin through one side and make sure the pin comes up from the other side in the exact same spot to make sure that you have your seams right on top of each other. Okay, so I'm going to flatten this out and obviously it's a little bit easier since I don't have interfacing here. Interfacing just makes things a little bit thicker. I'm going to take that template and again I'm going to use the two inch markings on this template right here. So I'm going to make sure that that two inch mark is right where my the top of my stitching line is. So I'm going to go ahead and line that up and as you can see the triangle markings on the template should line up with the side edges of your fabric. So I'm going to go ahead and take my fabric marker again and draw just a line straight across across that straight edge. Okay so instead of cutting this time I'm going to stitch directly on top of the line and I'm going to do the same thing on both sides. So this side and the opposing side as well. So stitching right on top of the line and I've gone ahead and prepared a fabric sample with both of those corners done. So here's what the corner looks like. As you can see from my dark blue stitches, here's my stitching line. I stitch right on top of the line that I drew and I did the same thing for the other side. But for this particular technique, you don't want to leave that extra dog ear of fabric hanging because that creates a lot of extra bulk in the corner of your bag. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to trim that um, corner to within about a quarter of an inch of the stitching line. So that reduces all that extra bulk right there. Okay, and I'm, again, I'm going to use that precision turning tool to turn my fabric piece right side out. And again, if you noticed, we use that two inch marking on the template and the width of that side panel in the bag is going to be four inches. So double whatever measurement that you used on the template and that measures, uh, if I press that correctly, it'll be approximately four inches right there. Okay, so those are the two different techniques for using those two boxing corner templates. Again, we have these in the shop in a set of two. so. If you like having um, different sewing gadgets and helpful tools, you may be interested in the boxing corners. And again, um, this templ these templates create projects such as this and form your two pieces of fabric, front and back fabric, into uh, an actual three-dimensional project. So